Hey, it's me, Ian. This video has nothing to do with music, so if that's what you're interested in, you're going to be pretty disappointed. It's actually about another one of my passions, which is fixing stuff. I made this video for the Yellowknife Ski Club. They have a sports timer made by a company called Algae that keeps breaking, and I used to fix it for them when I lived in Yellowknife, but I don't live there anymore. So this video will teach you how to fix it yourself so that hopefully someone else can fix it. All right, so here's how to repair um, broken jacks for the plunger on an Algae timer. You're gonna need some needle nose pliers or hemostats work pretty good for small stuff. You need some strippers, number two Phillips, some sort of little wrench, doesn't really matter what kind, and a 730 seconds driver uh, with a little extension. Use a nut driver or a ratchet, either one works. You need a little piece of repair wire. You need a soldering iron of some kind, some solder. All right, uh, so we're gonna start by testing continuity on the plunger to make sure that the plunger is working. The plunger is pretty simple. Uh, the button just connects these two wires together when you push it. Test that by setting your meter to resistance. Um, all you gotta do is you put your test leads in here like this. Hold that with your one hand. And uh, if your meter indicates continuity, then you know that the plunger is working. First step is we're gonna take the screws out. So we start, it's gonna be a Phillips screw here, a Phillips screw here. All right, with those screws removed now, we can uh, take off this plexiglass cover. Slides right out. All right, next we're gonna just loosen the screws for each number. There's two screws per number and they're Phillips number two. All right, so depending on how it got put back together, the overlap might not be perfect. I find the easiest way is to get out one of the decimal places. It's pretty light. And you can slide these. You'll see on the back, there's a little kind of a flag on the end of the screw, and that's what keeps it uh, held into this channel. So if you're having difficulty uh, removing them, probably you just gotta rotate the flag a little bit and it'll pop right out. Um, so if we look here, up inside the unit, there's a connector with two retention tabs on it. You can pull out the retention tabs. This ribbon cable comes right off. And we can take off the numbers. You gotta do them in order or else they won't come out. They'll come off like that. Next, we're gonna remove the battery. Uh, you can see this one's already been replaced with an aftermarket battery. And the battery connections are right here. So then all we gotta do is pull those off the board. Cool, now the battery's disconnected. We're also gonna remove this connector. All right, so the problem with this unit is that the jacks where the plunger plugs into are all loose and they're likely broken off the board. Uh, so I'll show you how to fix that. It's pretty easy. First, we're gonna take off this screw right here. here for safekeeping, of course. Then on the inside, you'll see there's two small nuts that are holding the board on. These are 7 30 seconds. I find it's easier if you use an extension. And it's also easier to take this one off first. So then, with those two nuts and that Phillips head screw removed, the board will come out. It's gonna be a lot easier to work on. Yeah, there's our problem right there. So you can see that the, uh, the jacks for the plunger are no longer connected to the board. All right, so we can see that the jacks are very loose here. First thing we're gonna do is tighten those up so that they don't break again. Also use 
our little wrench. So that's probably what caused the problem to begin with is that this jack is loose and it just ended up breaking the little lead wire there. Okay, cool, and then we're gonna re-solder this little bit on there. Looking at the board, we can see that this wire which popped off, I can actually just probably re-solder right on there. But this one broke in such a way that it's too short to connect. So it's gonna get a little piece of wire, I'm gonna strip it off, and we'll solder one end to the wire stump coming off the board, and we'll solder the other end to the connector. After solder, I'm gonna put on my eye protection. Make sure soldering iron's heating up. Get a little bit of solder. Started by tinning this piece. Don't breathe in those fumes. Oh yeah, what's that for you? Next we're gonna tin the stump. So notice I'm heating the wire. All right, so we can see that the piece that's broken off of this jack is actually too short to connect to the jack. So I'm gonna use this little piece of wire to extend it. I already kind of got it twisted around there so that it's locked in. And we're gonna solder it on. Now we're going to solder it onto the jack here. This takes three hands to do, that's right. Oh Lord, look at those lead fumes. Better watch out, you better wash your hands, that's right. Don't solder around infants, pregnant, or breastfeeding women. Just got to tack on the other jack. Get a good ball of solder on there. It doesn't fall off like last time. All right, so now we're going to test it. I'm going to test it with the unit open just so we can make sure this is working. Uh, firstly, we're going to reconnect the numbers into this little ribbon connector. You'll notice that there's a little uh, square on the one side. You can see it goes to the cutout in the connector here. It can only go in one way. And as you push it in, the retention clips will automatically close. It shouldn't take too much pressure. Next, we're going to reconnect the board uh, using this connector here that we took out earlier. That only goes in one way. And lastly, we're gonna reconnect the battery. Uh, once you connect the battery, be careful not to touch any of the circuitry. Uh, we're just gonna be testing the plunger. So you'll see right on the circuit board, there's a marked positive and negative. The positive's red, the negative's black. Or maybe, depending on the replacement battery you've got, the positive might be red and the negative might be blue, but hopefully you paid attention when you unplugged it. All right, so back over here to our repair. We're gonna take our plunger. We're gonna plug that in. Actually, it doesn't matter which way the plunger plugs in. Okay, and then we're gonna turn our unit on. It shows us the version. It is algae at zero. So let's see if our plunger works. Awesome, it does. We did it. 
We'll see if it stops. It stops. Cool. Plunger works. Congratulations. Now you just got to put it back together. All right, it's back together. So maybe you had to fight a little bit to get the individual number space just perfectly in there. Um, but uh, otherwise, pretty easy. You redid all the Phillips screws for each number, and then you slide the plexiglass piece back in. We'll see that our connectors are now nice and secure on there. And uh, it works. Excellent. Thank you for watching my video. I tried to make it kind of entertaining for you. I also wrote this song specifically to make it more fun. I write songs a lot. Please check them out. Thank you.